Okay. My apologies, we were a couple of minutes late. This has been a very long day of meetings so far, but uh, we're, all, we're all here other than two members of council, one, one of whom is uh, ill or uh, absent due to illness, and the other one is absent because of his spouse's illness. Uh, so we're... Madam Clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. First item on tonight's agenda is an application to amend the city zoning bylaw to remove the current prohibition on in-ground swimming pools within the RS7, RS8, and RS9 zones, bylaw 4363-2012. Sorry. <laughs> what a good start. Uh, good evening, Your Worship and members of Council. My name is Chris Jarvie, Development Planner with the City of Coquitlam. I'm here to present a staff-initiated tax amendment to the zoning bylaw to remove the prohibition on in-ground swimming pools within the R7, 8, and 9 zones. These zones currently permit above-ground pools, and staff propose to allow in-ground pools where conditions within the zoning bylaw, BC Building Code, and the Coquitlam Building Bylaw are satisfied. Staff are recommending all readings to bylaw 4363-2012. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any speakers to this item? Oops, actually, I did, actually I haven't read the, the preliminary opening yet. So, well, why don't we do that? Yeah. Um, these are the rules related to public hearings. We thank you all for coming out. Uh, what has happened is that Council has given first readings to these, these bylaws, including the one that was just presented. And first we'll hear from the staff of the development, uh, Planning and Development Department. And then we'll open the floor to anyone in the audience that has any views that they want to share with us. Uh, it's an opportunity to have a, those views known to council members, but it's not a question and answer period. It's not an opportunity to debate the merits of the proposal or uh, your own perspective uh, with anybody here or anybody in the audience that might have a different point of view. So everyone has to restrict, restrict their comments to the proposed bylaw, be as brief and concise as possible and uh, be respectful each, of each speaker. That's no booing, no cheering. Um, we, we don't clap in here. As chair of this hearing, I reserve the right to conclude any presentation that doesn't relate to the bylaw that becomes abusive or becomes repetitive of views that the speaker has already made known to council members. If you wish to provide, if you have something written that you want to be part of the permanent record of the meeting, you'll have to hand it in to Ms. Lohr uh, before the item Adjourn. So we're on the first item right now, and in a few minutes, once the speakers are all done, we will adjourn that item. Before that adjournment, you have to hand in anything written that you want to be part of the permanent record. After we adjourn an item, we can't hear anything else uh, from the audience uh, of, or the public in general uh, on, an, on the item until we've given it fourth and final reading or rejected it. Uh, so we, we, can't, we can't get any more information after that, that item is closed tonight. And after the public hearing tonight, we'll, we've, we'll convene a regularly scheduled council meeting to consider the items on tonight's agenda and perhaps some other items. Um, if, however, during the public hearing, council has requested some more information that isn't available right now, we can reserve that item to be voted on at another night. I'll now call on Ms. Lohr. We've already called on Ms. Lohr, and we've already heard from Mr. Jarvie, so I'm going to um, apologize for my omission on that one. And uh, now I will say, are there any speakers to this item? It's item number one. Any speakers to this item? The swimming pools. Third and final time, any speakers to this item? Seeing none. I'll declare this item closed. Item two is an application to enter into a heritage revitalization agreement and to authorize the city to designate the lands, buildings, and structures at 218 Begin Street as heritage property, bylaw numbers 4369 and 4371-2012. Good evening, Your Worship and Council Members. The subject site is located on the west side of Bay Inn Street between Brunette and Quadling Avenues. The site is designated one family residential. Zoning on the site and to the northwest and south is RS1 one family residential. Zoning to the east is RM2 three story medium density apartment residential. The site currently has a single family dwelling constructed in 1911. The dwelling, known as Subrun House, is part of the early French-Canadian settlement in Maillardville and is designed as an Edwardian-era four-square building with a symmetrical square plan, lapped wood siding, pyramidal roof, hipped roof veranda, and wooden veranda columns. 
The applicant is proposing to place a heritage designation on the Subaruan House and to enter into a heritage revitalization agreement with the city to rehabilitate the heritage building to its 1911 appearance. <clears throat> to, and to construct four additional housing units on the site. The heritage building will be retained as a freestanding building fronting Beijing Street, as you can see sideways. I guess they'll save room by tilting and all Yes, that. exactly. Thank you, Carrie. Staff are recommending all final readings to the heritage designation bylaw 4371 and the heritage revitalization agreement bylaw number 4369. Thank you. Thank you very much. Are there any speakers to this item? This is on Begin Street. Please step forward and we'll ask you to state your name and your address for the record. And then uh, my name minutes. is uh, Helen McGinnis. I'm speaking on behalf of my husband and uh, myself. We are the property owners next to Mr. Uh, Howard Yee's uh, proposed uh, construction. And speaking with Mr. Yi, uh, as we've been sitting uh, for the past uh, 20 minutes or so, he has wrote in a letter to us, and I'm not sure if you all have a copy of our concerns. Mm -hmm. Yes? Um, I've gone over the letter with my husband, and um, it looks like everything will be in order, and all of the requests that we've uh, asked for are going to be addressed. So at this point in time, um, we're okay with the development and um, just uh, for the records, it's, it's hopefully we'll all be neighbors. <laughs> well, Danny, well, thank you, very, thank thank you, you very much for that. And uh, thank you, Mr. Yee, for working with the, the folks in the neighborhood to make sure everything, any of their concerns that can be resolved get resolved. Are there any other speakers to this item? Any other speakers to this item? Third and final time, are there any other speakers to this item? Seeing none, I'll declare this item closed. Item three is an application to amend the city's zoning bylaw to rezone the property at 721 Gautier Avenue from RT1 two family residential to RT3 triplex and quadruplex residential, bylaw number 4353-2012. Good evening again. Uh, the subject site is located on the north side of Goche, adjacent to and east of Lowheat Highway. The site and surrounding sites are designated neighborhood attached residential. Zoning on the site and the surrounding area is RT1, two family residential. The site currently has a single family dwelling. The applicant seeks to rezone the site to RT3 triplex and quadruplex residential to facilitate a quadruplex residential development. And staff are recommending all final ratings to bylaw number 4353. Thank you. We have one registered speaker, Ken Mallow at 265 Bernacci. Good evening. Um, I'm not, we're not opposed to the rezoning, but we're concerned with the plan to close the lane. We use that lane and we've been using it for almost 40 years. Uh, if we don't exit by the lane onto the Lowheed, we have to back up out onto Bernacci Street. Bernacci Street has a fair amount of traffic with the school parents and stuff in the mornings and after school. I don't think it's safe. We've never seen an accident at the Lowheed. I don't think there's a reason to close the access to the Lowheed there. No one can turn left. There's a median dividing the road. And uh, I feel it's safer to exit in a forward onto something than backing onto something. It would also a concern as to how they will restrict the parking in the lane to access for people coming in and out. I hope there will be no parking in the lane, but I think that might be something we would address after. I'm not too familiar with this. Okay, which property is yours? We're 265 Bernacci. Oh, okay. You're we, across the lane. We're across the lane, uh, directly across from where they intend to park, mm -hmm. where the garages are going to be built. But 
generally speaking, we drive down the lane to enter our property and we exit by the highway. We also have a neighbor behind us who drives down the lane and exit by the highway. Once the lane is not, you know, you couldn't even turn around at the bottom once the development proceeds. So we would really need that ability to exit onto the, you know, the highway. There's a lane on the highway that turns onto Alderson, so we're not going right into the middle of the highway. And it's not much of a highway either. It's 60 kilometers, you know, an hour. And uh, that's pretty much it. Like I said, uh, the development's going to be fine. So please consider, you know, keeping the lane open when you proceed with this. Thank you. Are we talking about Gerard Avenue at this point? Mr. Right away. Mr. Uh, yes, Your Worship. Uh, just to draw your attention uh, and all of Council to the um, uh, to the aerial uh, properties that are actually fronting Gerard. Uh, Gerard is an unbuilt road allowance, so all those the two properties across the lane take access from the lane, both uh, the speaker's property and the one next to it. Um, the the goal. Um, the goal and I guess the objective from a safety perspective is actually to close the lane on low heat. That's actually a greater, from the engineering's perspective, is that the greater safety issue is to have a lane accessing to a major road like that. That's a greater safety concern, which is why um, that's been identified as part of the, uh, this project. Uh, we have been made aware just recently around the issue of the, um, the, the, the RV, and we are going to be working with the civil engineer on this project to confirm what your sight distances are for this vehicle. I know there's a hydro pole that's in that area. Mm -hmm. We can certainly look at um, look that infrastructure, whether it can be relocated. Uh, the goal is also to have a turnaround at the lane, at the highway, so there'll be a, some turnaround opportunity. So our, our goal would be to, um, our, our overriding goal would be to, to have that lane closed, but to address the, this gentlemen and then the adjacent properties needs for turnaround and proper access to their vehicles and that we would be working with the applicant and the civil engineer to facilitate that. Um, if that is not achievable, we'd have to reassess it. We, we understand the issue. Uh, but at this point, we feel that with the surplus areas that there are, um, road, uh, road allowances in that area, we could achieve both. Uh, but we would want to take a look in that property and see where, you're at, where your vehicle currently accesses uh, its turning radius is to uh, uh, to the, the property that's under consideration today. Um, insofar as parking, parking is restricted in a, in a local lane, so there would be no parking off that lane. Thank you. All right. Well, just keep in mind, in 40 years, I've never seen an accident there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Hodge. Yeah, I have a few questions about this. I was just actually trying to sort of quickly call up a street view. I, I drove down and looked at the property, but I came in at the front from Gothi, and then I sort of went around in the back in the lane. It, it was quite confusing getting in there. So Gothi at the back, the lane, that is currently, that's currently open? And it's legally open? It's not just something that sort of just over time has just become open. This is something we've only just become aware of? Uh, no, we were, we're aware that this this lane, this lane here, uh, is is the lane that currently provides access to the properties here. The two properties are on Gautier. Now, Gautier is the road itself is not an open road allowance, so this is the actual property to the uh, or access to these two properties. We've recently become aware that this owner here that just spoke has a a, a recreational vehicle of reasonable size that uh, may have limitations in terms of turning movements on that lane. So we, we're just, we would like to work with that property owner. We'd like to, oh, that's wise. Um, the civil engineering plans for this development would have to look at those utilities. And we would look at where that hydro pole is located, where we can get turning movements uh, off of that property uh, to try and make sure that that works. Uh, and in this area, there is an opportunity in this area to have a turnaround, okay, in that, in, for vehicles right at the end of that. Yes, so we're, we're also exploring that. Thanks. Again, as you can see, even with the current uh, site, it's been closed off. We, we do, there's an attempt made to close off roads to Low Heat Highway because um, obviously the two classifications are, are, are typically not found. A local road, a lane to a, to a major arterial road is not a, a condition that we want to perpetuate. 
So that's the that's one of the overriding goals. But yet we've we've closed off Gautier, but Gautier but has never. Uh, sorry, Gautier. Yes, and that was closed. Um, that's correct. And there's an underpass. The road was closed off, but the lane in behind was not. It, well, what occurred, um, if I can, uh, your, your Worship, when the road, there was a, a major, obviously, road rehabilitation project for Low Heat Highway. At that time, there was really an attempt to just build, build this road. It was a major project. Um, the city typically doesn't uh, close accesses as part of that process because uh, that does require more consultation. Um, and um, the right opportunity would be an opportunity like today to look at where some of these, um, these constraints may occur. There are two properties we're talking about here that currently take access, uh, I guess, directly off of this access from, uh, from the highway. But this, this move is really not because of this development, although it will add some traffic into the area. But this is really an issue that, that exists whether or not this, this proposal will go through, or is this just going to trigger it because we're going to see an extra six cars potentially coming and going from, from here? Your Worship, that's correct. Uh, we, we are going to be seeing more redevelopment in this area. It is uh, a neighborhood attached residential. Uh, with the addition of four, uh, four units here, we felt that it's at that time that we should look at closing that access, it, and traffic will eventually build as more projects uh, are developed in the area. But we felt with the addition of those units, it's, it's the right time to address this, the uh, potential safety issue. And all parking is at the back. When I look at this, because of the shape of the, of the property, it's a very narrow front and wider. It's a pie shape. So that's why we, the developer is proposing to put the, the parking at the back. There's no driveway. There's no entrance at the front. Uh, I'm presuming there'd be some on-street parking at the front. Um, Your Worship, uh, actually, you are correct. Uh, the site itself uh, has most of its frontage on the lane. It is the, the, uh, the best opportunity. You can also see the shape of the, the actual road um, in front of the property here on uh, um, Gautier. That road is, is quite narrow. Uh, we are, you can see, in, it's hard to tell, but that's a, quite a narrow road in front of this property. As a result of that narrow road, there isn't a lot of available on-street parking. And so we, I uh, think we've included in one of the sketches, um, uh, I'm not sure if I have it here, but there's, there's some road works on, um, uh, on Gautier that would allow um, some um, uh, turnaround on Gautier, but there's not going to be any on-street parking on Gautier because of the narrow pavement width um, between Bernacci and the property. Um, so that's where the rear lane is, um, does have all the parking, and I believe there's all of the parking required under the bylaw. And there's, a, I think, a couple of stalls on aprons as well, additional to the uh, parking requirements. But the concern is always that for visitors and people coming in, because we're not going to allow parking in the lane because that's standard throughout the city. But what you're saying is there will be no on-street parking at the front as well as no parking in the lane? Uh, yes, that's, that's, uh, that's correct. Even though there's only two homes in that block, and it, well, I guess the, the, new, the new one and the existing one, and then across the street from that, uh, the recollection is that's the, uh, the entrance into the underground pedestrian underpass, so there's, there's no homes across the street. So essentially we have in that one little block, considering both sides of the road, all we'll have is one house and this new development, and yet there'll be no parking available at the front. Uh, the narrow pavement makes it quite difficult. Uh, there, there's still some details that we're working out in terms of distances to the corner, potentially on the south side of that road, but because of, of required distances to the intersection of Bernacci, we can't confirm there could be a stall there. We're working with a very na narrow pavement and, and we could not obtain, uh, um, the objective was not to pile on for this size of a property additional five or six meters of road dedication. Uh, it was felt that that was onerous to a property of this size in this location. Uh, as a result, it was felt that we could obtain a couple of additional stalls and aprons at the rear without impacting the, uh, this, this development. There is no development opportunities to the south, as you can see. It's really just a road allowance where the pathway enters um, underneath the highway. Right. So. Um, uh, th certainly there could be an opportunity for adding stalls to the south, but we'd have to significantly change that, and there's some significant grades in there, and it made it very, very difficult to do that. So all those constraints put together uh, led us to the current design.
Who owns the property across the street, that triangular piece? Across uh, that's, the a, that's a road allowance. Uh, I believe that's city owned. Oh, it's ours, so it's ours. But there's a substantial grade in there. So we can't just shift the road over it, it, to our side. It's it, that steep. Yeah, my it's, understanding. It's, it's an underpass. It's, it's an, an underpass. underpass. I remember the underpass part, so it gets yeah. steep. I just wondered. Uh, it just seems that, uh, that they're, they're, it's, you know, for, for parking, that's always becomes the, the issue on these things yeah. to, to once again have a development without parking on the front. I'm just looking at where our options are. On site parking is how many stalls altogether? It's uh, seven? Six. Just, which uh, is yes, Your Worship, there, there's six pro stalls on the property, which uh, there's six formal stalls on the property. There's yep. um, a number in garages, four in garages and two in parking pads. But there are two apron stalls also in front of the garages, which also can be utilized as informal tandem stalls. So technically you could have the availability of, um, of eight stalls on the property. Four in the garage, two on pads, and two which is basically the driveway, which is like a single family home. You get one in the garage or one correct. in the driveway. So for two more in the driveway for a total of six formal, eight, eight Correct. Yes. Okay, thank you. So I, I find myself wondering why we don't just... Spacious. I don't want to... Sight lines are not... <coughs> My apologies. Just a second. Sorry, I was just waiting for staff to... I, I find myself wondering why we don't offer to close the road. Um, we, we haven't, there's no, the, the, the end of the road as it butts up the Lougheed, end of, I guess that's Gauthier, is of no value to anybody other than it's an extra pavement that you're not allowed to park in. Um, you're two stalls at the end. I'm just going to pick something up. Okay. And I don't want to conduct land negotiations in, on camera here, but, yeah, it, it, I mean, I remember going through there as a kid and it was, that's why I was trying to get the street level to remind me. Hmm. Yeah. Good. I like the blue spot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Raul, well, I'm not sure why it's not uh, reading. I could come over and look at it. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it, wor it works for me, but I'm We're closest. I've <laughs> left a few options, so I apologize. Um, for those who can see it, and I will, I will pass this one. Um, there is a, uh, yeah. so the subject site gives people over yes. to mm. This is the bridge, uh, the, the, the area down. now to the overpass. This is the, uh, the stop sign at Bernacci and There's a stop sign, but, the, but, but no one would ever be on that road. So, yes, but, you know, it's, I'm speaking for the engineering department. We would push to try and get an issue on the south side. Since engineering isn't here, we can agree that yeah, we will have to. But typically, where the fence is, is right at the edge of that embankment. So, yes. we have to look at how stable that embankment is, how close we can actually build a parking patch. We would look to do that if possible, certainly under council's uh, direction. Sure. I can certainly pass this around to the council. Sure. Apologies for that. No worries. I might still. <laughs> Do I still have the floor? Okay. Well, why don't you come on up so we can see this? Sorry, no. That's okay. At the Lougheed, it's 1,500. At the bottom of Gauthier, every year, every summer, two, three, four vehicles go for sale and they park there 
and people driving by on the highway can see them. So there is room down there for vehicles. I don't know how much of it could be formally turned into parking, but I know that there is space for at least three, if not four vehicles, without interfering with anybody. So just to make it clear, there's room at the end of Gauthier at the highway for several vehicles. There you go. Yes, and prospective purchasers. Just mentioned you could talk to Bill before. Yeah. Okay, Councillor Hodge, you're done. No, I just, I just, here, but, but that sort of helps to sort of make the point that I was asking. If that road dead ends, there's at least the width of a road, and it's a road to nowhere. Could, could the road not end 50 feet shorter at the neighbor's mm -hmm. house? Because there's no point driving down in front of the other to the new property because you can't park in front anyway. So why not turn that road into three stalls at at the end, just diagonal straight in at the end of the road. I mean, if, I'm, I'm just thinking that there may be potential for street parking. I mean, it's sort of one or the other. You're saying, well, if we park on the road, we can't drive by it, but nobody's going to drive by it because there's nowhere to go. And I'm just looking for potential for where if it becomes an issue down the road where we may be able to put parking because we certainly don't want it in the lane. And uh, I just think that like these developments, um, visitor parking, visitor parking becomes the uh, the issue. So I just throw that. Out. I know we can't solve it here, but it just looks to me like the parking may not be as as uh, bad as we think. If if we have potential to uh, to do something creative down the road. If I can, worship, I, yes. Um, it is a suggestion, actually, I was discussing this afternoon with the General Manager of Engineering and Public Works, that exact possibility. Um, I think there is an opportunity um, to try and achieve as much parking on that road end as possible within the constraints that are available. Uh, we have tried to accommodate a turnaround, but I think we can probably accommodate a turnaround, and if that area, if that actual built part of the road gets pulled back, we might be able to accommodate one or two more stalls potentially with a turnaround on the property itself um, if we need to, um, to to have the cars turn around. Um, we're certainly prepared and certainly engineering and public works has also just, uh, indicated that they're quite prepared to to facilitate and to partner in that with the developer um, and we would then um, under that direction we could get the, their um, engineer and our engineers working to maximize on-street parking on that road end including moving the access back further to, uh, to accommodate those. Thank you. Okay, back to my point. I, I, I'm not sure why, whether it's on-street parking that I want here, uh, since we don't need that street anymore. Um, it might improve some other flow of a property if it, if it was a dead end that was slightly shorter. I'm looking at the street view, uh, the Google Street View, and it, it doesn't make any sense for me for us to continue to own a street that doesn't go anywhere. Um, right. and when it, so I mean, let's 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 stop owning it, allow it to be somewhat greener space, perhaps, uh, to allow a property that still has room for four, but at least has some access to front parking, um, as well as some expanded green space. I think that uh, it's a pretty tight lot anyway for four, and I think this might make it work better. Councillor O'Neill. Yeah, so the, um, just a clarification, the, the zoning that they are applying for here requires 1.5 stalls per unit, and there's four units. There are six dedicated stalls. Um, in addition, now we, we, we come up with this question in the last couple of months that's come before us before, and, and, and residents have come to us and say there's no parking anywhere else um, that these people can park on. I'm thinking of the Austin development for the uh, four little cottage type houses that we're going to be going there. However, in, in this, uh, it does appear to me that there, there's lots of off, uh, uh, lots of other parking that's quite nearby. Is the um, uh, on Bernacci Street on both the uh, the west and east sides of Bernacci Street? That's a, there. There are not parking restrictions there, are there? And that's just a very short walk um, to the proposed development. It's my understanding, uh, Your Worship, that it's that, that road is not entirely. There's some gravel shoulders there. Right. It's not entirely finished, so there there are some informal opportunities. 
ultimately when that is built or rebuilt there would be opportunities under a collector I think it's a collector at this point at this point there are some opportunities further up yeah. but they are on very informal gravel shoulders well, that's fine I mean we're, we're just talking about rezoning this particular property to allow this particular development that meets the requirements of the zoning bylaw for numbers of, of um, parking spaces provided um, and then we're talking about additional parking and right now there's additional parking available on Bernacci it's, it's just per, probably a 20 second walk away and 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 uh, by now uh, we there's been discussion about how big this area is in, in front of the house there where the it is gravel by the way as well um, um, now I drove down there uh, last fall and took some pictures and um, it's actually a, a pretty sizable area and I did a very comfortable U-turn there as well. Um, at this time, you could easily park two cars in front of the, uh, the red fence that uh, is on the south side of that house, um, easily I would think. Um, so the, uh, that's not the biggest issue facing us right now. The, big, the, the real issue is rezoning this uh, property and um, uh, but the, the parking always does come up at this stage and uh, you, you've, you've told me that there's parking available on Renacci. I think there's parking available actually at the end of Gauthier as well right now and we'll still be there if we don't do anything and there's still people drive down there and do U-turns. I know I did and there's that's what you're supposed to do when you get to a street like that. There is a sign right at the end that says no right turn. <laughs> well, you can't turn right anyway onto uh, Low Heat Highway because there's a big barrier there. Um, so anyway, I'm satisfied with this. Thank you. I'll show you this picture. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll wait for the rest of the speakers. But Councillor Asmus. Well, I, I still think, and I, I thank Councillor Hodge for bringing it up. And well, uh, and that's an issue I think Councillor Hodge and I have talked about a, a couple of times right now. Is our parking standard on single family homes? We know this in the Northeast and different areas. Well, it may be fine today down the road if we do the infill housing that we're talking about in this area and we keep a 1.5 you've got four units with only six parking spots and, and nothing on the street and if the other lot starts to develop the same densities you're going to have a lot of issues about parking and I think we need to be ahead of the game on this one and I think the mayor's suggestion about the end down there creating more parking is a good idea but I, I do think to staff as we are looking at the housing choices in these areas it's been an issue from council 1.5 for single family residential where you're going to have uh, guaranteed two cars per year. Okay. So that's my only point. But the development is, I'll support it. It's a public hearing. Yeah. We're, we're still in the hearing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'll just leave it. Sometimes, sometimes we're, yeah. it's been a long, it's a long day. Long day. It's okay. long day. Are there any other speakers to this item? Please step forward. Hi. Yes. My name is Satendra Man, and uh, I'm from Archetype Design, I'm the designer for this project. And my address is 233 West 28th Street, North Vancouver. Um, I just wanted to mention that uh, uh, subsequent to the design, you know, we designed this quite a while ago, and uh, the RT3 parking bylaw, the size of the stalls, has changed. And so uh, what we did was to look at, uh, you know, in response to the concerns for more parking, uh, I did look at a sketch to incorporate uh, another stall along the lane, and uh, we can easily do that. So um, along the lane, we're able to add one more surface stall without, uh, you know, changing the feel or um, the sense of the backyards because the stalls are one foot narrower now and so it allows us to add one more stall. So we submitted a sketch, I don't know if you have it uh, handy, but we uh, submitted an updated site plan for that. So we can get one more at the back. In addition to that, if it was permitted, uh, in front of uh, unit um, Unit 2 in the front yard, mm -hmm. uh, we'd also be able to incorporate uh, one more stall at the corner um, if that was to be supported. And, and we could still achieve the 
um, a minimum private yard areas that are required. So uh, we could add two more stalls easily to this site. In addition to that, as mentioned on um, the uh, attached units, uh, unit, th unit three and four on the driveways, we could have uh, two more informal stalls. So we'd have a total of 10 stalls that we could accommodate on this site for, uh, you know, four units. So that would be more than two per unit. And uh, so we, and we'd be happy to make that change if that was uh, supported. So, and if there's, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer those. Thank you very much. Are there any other speakers for this item? Please. My name is Linda Malo. I live at 265 Bernacci with that fellow right there. And um, I, I still have my main concerns. I've lived there for almost 40 years. I've paid taxes for 40 years. I paid my share to have the, the lane paved. It's taking away from the value of my property if you take away that lane. And our property, and we're not just talking about the trailer. The trailer is not the biggest problem. Trust me, we can get it out of there probably. We're talking about my husband's going to have to back up all the way down the lane. Now, do you know what's adjacent to our area? There's a Montessori school. There's a Fatima school. There's This is all on Alderson. I mean, there's the Alderson school, so there's one, two, three schools in a row. And then there's also the Belvedere Care Center. And everybody that takes their kids to school goes flying up Bernacci. You try backing up onto Bernacci. It's dangerous. And if... No, but don't you agree? Yeah, and you know, I mean, we live in a wooden building. This gentleman lives next door to the new development. The gentleman on my right? Anyway, him in the blue jacket. Um, and you know, he came tonight to, to voice his concerns. We want emergency vehicles to be able to come up and down. And if I want an emergency vehicle there, I don't care if he turns right off the low heat highway if my house is on fire. You know, I mean, I just, and I don't want him backing out. <laughs> well, maybe if it's during the day, but I don't know. I just don't think it's a good idea to close our lane because it's going to affect the value of my property. It's going to affect the safety of my family and my friends and anybody else. But I do like the parking, you know, like on Gauthier Street where you could add more parking there. But green space I'm really concerned about. So if they're adding more parking spaces within that little area that they want to put, you know, two duplexes in, does that take away the green space for the kids that might eventually come? <laughs> you know, I'm concerned about green space and trees and, and things. And um, what else? Yeah, if nobody parks in the lane, that would be a good thing because <laughs> I wouldn't want them flying out of their garage while I'm backing out of my spot because bad things could happen there. Anyway, that's all I've got to say, and I hope you consider that. Thank you. Councillor O'Neill. Yeah, just a clarification on the process um, coming out of that, that, that last question and her husband's question as well. Um, just to confirm, what we're doing today is, uh, is looking at an issue regarding rezoning some land. Um, and um, later tonight, if things proceed, uh, we'll be deciding on the rezoning of the land. Uh, that rezoning, uh, even though there apparently is a proposal about lane closing, that rezoning does not necessarily entail lane closing, correct? Uh, that, that's actually correct. Uh, our, our intent is uh, with additional density would be to look at closing the lane and, and with that the proponent, a civil engineer hired by the developer would be looking at whatever works are required to assist in that. Uh, although what we've committed because of the, um, uh, the additional, uh, the need for additional turnaround and further examination of potential parking opportunities, we would look at that and determine could we deal with both the, uh, the issues of on-street parking and turnaround for vehicles on that lane were it to be closed. So there is a, a broad intent with the additional density that will come with this to close that lane to low heat highway because of long-term safety that will be used by new residents in this, on this property. And the intent would be to, um, to look at that issue with the development of this site. However, 
but but there is an opportunity if, if, if with um, with this application to look at um, to look like keeping it open. Uh, but at this point, we've identified the closure as a, as an important uh, component. So council can't actually instruct you to keep that lane open or to close it. This is an entirely a bureaucratic decision. Then it's a decision from the engineering uh, manager of engineering and public works. And is there a um, appeal process from that if the if, you, if the, the, the lane is decided to be closed um, and people are opposed to that? Is there any any appeal at all to that? Uh, typically, a, lane, a closure of a road like this, the council would be the ultimate appeal. So, uh, normal normal process would be the engineering public works department would go out, consult with the residents, look at future road network, and advise that there's a change in the network. Ultimately, the appeal would be city council. Okay, thank you. And council could say that, in spite of the best efforts of staff and the recommendations, and perhaps even the legal opinions that might have been presented at that point, we we um, we will substitute our judgment. <laughs> council could do that. Yes. Okay. Councillor Reamer. Thank you. Well, my questions uh, were very similar uh, around the lane, um, and I was trying to get a sense if engineering had already done some sort of a study um, on this. I um, also wondered if fire had provided any input to it as well with respect to the lane closure. I do realize we're talking about the rezoning, which is somewhat separate from the lane closure, but it's not. So. Those are my questions. Uh, Your Worship, Engineering has done a very, very preliminary look. Uh, it, it's the, their high-level intent is to close these lanes wherever possible because of long-term safety. They have not identified any issue with fire response in this area. Uh, I don't believe that this is a, uh, a, a response route because of the nature of the actual road and, and condition to it. Uh, but we would look at that issue as part of the lane closure uh, completion process. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other speakers to this item? Are there any other speakers to this item? Third and final time, are there any other speakers to this item? Seeing none, I declare this item and the public hearing adjourned. <laughs>